Okay, it's Phil Lee returning with another episode of Civil War Chat. Today is Tuesday, the 20th of September, 2022. Uh, click on the uh, subscribe button here in the lower right to subscribe to uh, future episodes. And then also, if you click that notification bell in the far upper right, if you click that, a, uh, a an historian, a Civil War his, historian whom you do not like, who will be anonymous, he will die or she will die if you click that bell. So go ahead and click that. And uh, let's go ahead. I want to tell you what my um, topic is today. It's going to be President Grant deception uh, inspires President Biden. So I'm going to link the two and show you how the conduct of President Grant inspired what we're seeing from President Biden today, whether he knows it or not. It's a it's a prior example of what he was uh, what he was doing. So let me pull up my notes on that. Republican President Ulysses Grant's two terms were among the most corrupt in American history. Even the Grant friendly editors of the Wikipedia are compelled to list 12 corruption scandals during his eight years in office. That's an average of three every two years or one and a half every year. Now, most of these came to light only after uh, the Democrat Party won control of the House of Representatives in 1874. That was six years into Grant's eight years presidency. Until then, the Republicans held control of both houses of Congress, as well as the presidency and the Supreme Court, kind of like Biden. Except, you know, I guess Biden doesn't have the Supreme Court, but Grant had all of them. And that enabled the Republicans at that time to hide the scandals in his office by focusing the public mind on Southern Reconstruction under the deception that their aim was to protect freedmen as a moral imperative. The Republicans' true objective at that time, including Grant's, however, was to keep the carpetbag regimes in power so that the Republicans would remain America's dominant politi political party nationally. As long as they kept the carpetbag governments in power, they had 11 states uh, in, under their thumb, the, the southern states. Okay, now President Joe Biden's technique for deflecting attention from his unprecedented failures is similar. While he has focused us on the mirage of so-called systemic racism, he hopes to prevent us from looking at Hunter Biden's influence peddling and the payoffs Hunter makes to, quote, the big guy. Who else could it be? It's clearly Joe Biden himself. Along with the rest of today's Democrats, Biden focuses on, focuses on race because it gives him political power. That is all that he really cares about. If he truly had an interest in blacks in his mind, then he, will, he, he would avoid giveaway policies like the student loan forgiveness that merely makes the recipients more dependent upon government handouts. Not only is it outrageously illegal the, to expect others to pay for another person's debts, it is, it's, it's, it's irresponsible and it's, in the way he's setting it up, it's racist because he's going to give twice as much debt forgiveness to uh, Pell Grant recipients as he does to the others. And the Pell Grant recipients, 60% of Pell Grant recipients are Black, whereas they Blacks represent only 13% of the population. But anyway, this government handout program is, should we should take note of what Benjamin Franklin said. Quote, those who would give up essential liberty that is to take care of yourself, to purchase a little temporary safety, such as partial student loan forgiveness, deserve neither liberty nor safety. I'll repeat that from, a, uh, from Benjamin Franklin. Those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Now, aside from this 12 scandal cited by Wikipedia, Consider that Grant was a house guest at Jay Cook's Philadelphia mansion the very morning. He had spent the night and he had breakfast that very morning in September 1873 when Jay Cook and company announced it could not meet its financial obligations. 
thereby causing America to fall into a deep, lengthy depression. Consider also that Cook was the single biggest political contributor to Grant's successful 1872 re-election campaign. And finally, consider that Cook got his charter to the Northern Pacific Railroad after Grant moved into the White House, and that the selling of Northern Pacific investment securities was the engine that ran the J. Cook and Company Ponzi scheme, although it was the, pon the, the term Ponzi scheme did not come along for another 50 years or so. But it was, a, it was basically a Ponzi scheme, and it was all enabled by the Northern Pacific, which was a charter that, that uh, Cook got uh, when uh, Grant was president, and it was a national charter. Additionally dubious, but not illegal, was Grant's conspicuous nepotism. It included as many as 40 relatives who prospered during his time in office. Among them was Brother Orville, who obtained contracts from the Interior Department and the War Department that did not require him to do any work to collect his fees and salaries. Similarly, brother-in-law James Casey was appointed collector of customs in New Orleans, and that's the kind of a post, like in New York, where money where money tends to stick to the fingers of those who collect it. Brother-in-law Frederick Dent was given a sinecure in the White House where he peddled his knowledge and influence as an informed insider. In sum, Grant's interest in civil rights and the civil rights of ex-slaves was chiefly motivated by his desire to keep Republican controlled carpetbag regimes in power. His altruistic interest in freedmen's civil rights were secondary at best. He proved that in, in the 1875 Mississippi elections when he declined to provide election supervisors as requested by the carpetbag governor because politicians in Ohio told, told him that if he um, provided supervisors in Mississippi, that Ohio Republicans uh, would lose uh, their state offices in the, in the next election. There was a sharp turn in, in national sentiment against federal interference uh, in uh, state elections. Even though it was Mississippi, Ohio said, hey, we don't want the federal government interfering in state elections. I don't give a damn if it's Mississippi or Ohio. And that's essentially what they told Grant and Grant uh, backed out. And so as a result, uh, the carpetbaggers lost Mississippi. Now, today's Republicans might have avoided this awful fate of having Joe Biden as president and, my God, Kamala Harris as vice president if they had respected Confederate memory for its classic opposition to centralized government power instead of letting slavery dominate their thoughts. And consider also that during this period when Grant was president, he could have improved the prospects for the entire nation, but he did nothing to reduce tariffs, which was a severe penalty on the agricultural South, nor uh, black and white, uh, dutiable, the, the tax on the uh, tariff on dutiable items was 45% during this period, which meant that there was a significant penalty in, in, in the, uh, to the, uh, export of cotton because when people imported the goods here, they had to pay a 45% tariff and they lost 45% of their uh, uh, dollar proceeds to use to buy our goods. And the uh, result of that was, if you just match exports with imports, is they just simply couldn't export as much cotton at the price that, uh, that they would have otherwise without tariffs. Grant did nothing to reduce tariffs, nothing. It didn't happen. And, it, and the Republicans continued that in, uh, until Woodrow Wilson became president, a Democrat, in uh, 1913. He could, have been, he could have reduced tariffs, and that would have helped the South's ex uh, export economy. Clearly, a, 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 an economy that was basically on subsistence. He did nothing. And that's because he had the, he had the, he had the public mind focused on these imagined, well, not imagine there was violence in the South against blacks, no doubt about it, but it was uh, it was exaggerated and it was done for the purpose, for, chiefly for the purpose of deflecting criticism 
an investigation into the corruption of the Grant presidency. Okay, so if you'd like to learn more about that, uh, here's what I recommend. Let's see, here it is. This book, U.S. Grant's Failed Presidency by Philip Lee. Get this book. And if you want to learn what I've just talked about today and more that will that will help you sharpen your focus on what happened during Reconstruction that you do not hear from the college professors, it's against their it's it's against their agenda. It is contrary to their agenda of demonizing uh, white Southerners. So get U.S. Grant's Failed Presidency. It's twenty two dollars at Amazon. You want an autograph copy? It's twenty six dollars from me. You got to email me, Phil, P H I L underscore Lee, L E I G H. And we'll see to it that you get a, a copy, you know, once we, you know, arrange for the payment and that sort of thing. Okay, so let's see. Um, let me close that and say, okay, thanks for coming. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for watching and listening. I look forward to seeing you next time.